and welcome to Chairside Live. I'm Megan Strong. And I'm Will Schmidt, Registered Dental Assistant here at Gladwell Dental. And we're so happy you're here today because we're continuing our exciting series from Dr. Chi where he's talking about some common problems and the solutions to acquiring digital intraoral scans. In today's episode, he's tackling proximal contacts. That's right, you know Megan, the hardest data points to reach on any digital scan are the proximal contacts and the interproximal areas in general. You know what, and especially if undercuts are involved. That's right. So today on Dr. Chi's Live Patient, he's gonna continue with tissue retraction, moisture control, but also show us some angles and some tricks to be able to get that data. That sounds good, let's check it out. With digital impressions taken for fixed restorations, so when there's a preparation, single unit or multiple units, the most challenging area to scan will be the contact surfaces of the adjacent teeth because they could be at different angles. The adjacent teeth could be at different long axis angles from the preparation, could be some severe undercuts. So we really want to ensure that those are captured accurately and included in the digital impression so that the lab can make and create the contact surfaces for the restoration correctly. If any of those areas are missing, the restoration will typically be too large because uh, again, the lab and the softwares that the labs use won't know precisely where those surfaces are. So let's review some tips on how to accurately scan those surfaces of the adjacent teeth so that you can get precise fitting restorations. One of the most challenging areas to scan are the contact surfaces of the adjacent teeth to the preparation. So it's easy to capture the prep, it's easy to capture the occlusal and buccal lingual surfaces. But in this case, with the preparation is on tooth number 30, the mesial surface of the distal tooth 31, the distal surface of the mesial tooth number 29, uh, those areas can be a little difficult to capture because when you rotate to the buccal and lingual, the light source from the camera just really can't contact those areas very well in many cases. Especially with the distal tooth, the curve of speed, that distal tooth might be a little angled so there's an increased undercut on that distal tooth. So we'll go through how to accurately capture those areas and we do want to include that with the digital impression. We see that on a lot of impressions that come into the lab digitally with missing contact surfaces. When that happens, the restorations are going to be larger dimensionally from mesial to distal and that means heavier contacts and more adjustments on your end. So in order to combat that, we do want to make sure that the contact surfaces are accurately captured. It's not just the prep, it's not just the occlusal, buccal lingual of the adjacent teeth. Those contact surfaces are very critical. So it's all about positioning the camera in a correct way to allow the light source from the camera to reflect off of those surfaces. So usually we position the camera from mesial to distal and do our rotations to capture the undercuts buccal lingually. But on those mesial and distal surfaces of the adjacent teeth, we sometimes have to bring the body of the camera out toward the buckle or even from the opposite end of the arch to allow for that rotation. So I'll take you through how we would do that. So we have our scan. We've scanned the quadrant area over uh, the lower right quadrant. We have most of the teeth, most of the information that we want. Again, for a quadrant scan, usually I like to scan from as far mesially as the canine. So in this case, we're working lower right. We scan to number 27. And then we scan all the way back to the last tooth, which is also the distal tooth to our restorative area, number 31. We have all of that information, and we could send this off. The system doesn't tell you not to send it off or it's missing critical data. It doesn't know. So it's important that you analyze your impression, your digital model, to see if you have the information that's required for the restorative situation. So in this case, the only thing that's missing is the contact surfaces, surface of the mesial side of 31. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna still use my mirror or some retraction aid on the cheek. You also want to ensure that just like with your regular scan or your initial scan, that the teeth are very dry the preparation is dry, and the area that's critical, the area that you're trying to capture, is also dry. And you can do this during that initial scan sequence. Can you use a mirror to retract the tongue, please? All right, so I have the help of Ileana, who's going to keep the tongue retracted. 
And now it's all about positioning. So during the initial rotation to the lingual, on that live view on the lower left-hand corner, rotation to lingual and rotation to the buckle, you can see it's really hard to visualize that undercut, that mesial surface of 31. So what we have to try to do is change the angulation. So with the camera activated, so I'll activate the system, and let's first get the system to recognize where we are. I see the rest of the digital model return and generate. Now I'm gonna rotate the camera, the body of the camera, out from the buckle. As the body rotates out on the buckle side, now I'll rotate the camera, the head of the camera, to allow the light source to come into contact with that undercut. Now as you rotate, you, you may notice the area is not getting captured, so you may have to play around with the distance. So you may have to go closer or even further away. And if you're not able to capture it in this situation, in this rotation, and it does look like that area is captured at this point, but if you're having trouble with that rotation or that positioning, I'll bring the body of the camera now to the opposite end of the arch. So now I'm almost entering from the lower left quadrant from where the canine is, number 22. And now I'll do the opposite. I'll rotate the, the camera to the left. And on that live view on the lower left, I'm trying to visualize that surface of what we're trying to capture. And if it's not picking up, I can play around with the distance. I can go closer or further away play around with the distance from what we're trying to capture and see if you can help your, your camera or your system out uh, to visualize that surface. Another thing to keep an eye on if you're still struggling to capture it, double check that the area is dry. You can again suction at any point and use your air syringe to dry off that surface, dry off the area around that surface because that will allow the light source to bounce back more effectively on a dry surface. So now if we evaluate the contact that we were attempting to capture, again, that mesial surface of 31, we can see now the hole is filled in, and we've entirely filled in that surface, and now when we go to digitally design our restoration, we have a solid surface that we can design to. We know precisely where the mesial of that neighboring tooth is so that we can establish the correct contact value. Now in some cases it could be so challenging to capture the area under the undercut on the adjacent teeth, especially that distal neighbor because of a mesially tipped tooth. We're mostly concerned with the height of contour, so the widest portion of where the design is going to contact. So if you can accurately capture the upper half of the neighboring teeth, that's usually adequate for us to establish a contact surface in the design. So you don't have to keep struggling, struggling. As long as you get most of the upper half of that contact surface, you'll be good to go. So that's how we would capture the adjacent teeth. Make sure that's filled in. You analyze the digital model that you have, not only the prep, not only most of the adjacent teeth, but those contact surfaces can be critical to how much adjustment, as much or as little, adjustment to fit the restoration when it returns back as you seat it on the patient. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Chi. Now stay tuned for the next episode in this series. Dr. Chi is going to talk about preventing distortion in the digital model. He sure is. And if you missed any of the earlier episodes in this series, you can head to ChairSideLive.com and catch up. You can. Yeah, but for today's episode, we're all wrapped up. So on behalf of everyone here at Glival Dental, thank you so much for watching. We'll meet you right back here next time. Get that data. Get that. Get that data. Get that data. Get that data. Get get that data.